Now the gorges break and the streamlets wake and the sap begins to flow and each green bud that stirs my blood in summons and I must go. Then away to the heart of the deep unknown where the trout and the wild moose are, where the fires burn bright and the tents gleam white under the northern star. Life with COVID had changed our plans for this trip a number of times, but the day was finally here and we set out with lots of excitement and some trepidatious feelings about the trip to come. Sporting Lake Stream Access Point is one I've visited many times. This time was a little different because we were going to be going with the current out to Fifth Lake Flowage and from there on to White Sand Stream. It was a hot and sticky 22 degrees when John drove us up to the access point and from the time he dropped us off till the following Friday when he picked us up, we didn't see any other people. Fifth Lake flowage was one part of the trip that provided me with a fair bit of nervousness. I was concerned because it's a big dammed lake. It has a lot of tree skeletons, a lot of rocks. The wind can whip up pretty good across this lake because it's so big. I was glad to get it over with, but at the same time, it was pretty amazing to paddle through these huge skeletons of what were once part of the forest. The wind did bring us some pretty large waves at some points, but a lot of times we were able to tuck in behind all of the many, many islands that provided some shelter. Sometimes it literally felt like we were on the ocean. And then we reached White Sand Stream. At this point in the trip, the portages were fairly easy to find and very easy to follow. This would not remain true for the entirety of the trip. But we would take it while we had it. The water was calm, the night was beautiful, and it was the perfect start to our trip. This is 
is home for the night. There's kind of a fire pit. <laughs> and this is on an esker. Very cool. Saturday morning, our official day one of the trip, we had high hopes of getting to Kofan Cabin and a lot of work ahead of us. So we set off early in the morning, working our way through the rest of White Sands Stream to White Sands Lake, and then doing a pretty respectable portage into Sand Beach Lake, where we would find Kofan Cabin. He's doing one last sweep over. I made sure the fire was out really well, and now we're on our way. This was a fairly easy portage, right around 300 meters, and quite a lovely little walk. That looks pretty fresh. After leaving that portage, we paddled for a little bit, jumped a couple of white-tailed deer, and found what looked to be remnants of an old dam. That morning, the rain pitter-pattered here and there, but when we found ourselves on White Sand Beach, it was quite lovely and we took our time to enjoy the sights. Our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl Daydreamer, kidnap me Take me back, all the way back to the day Barefoot 
nights and winters on our skates One big smile across my face We used to dance our way to church on Sundays Mama set the pace They dream of and me Regular coffee breaks became something we treasured, especially when we found beautiful beaches or neat little spots to pull off and enjoy the view from. Although we did pay for this time that we spent relaxing later in the day, I don't regret it. Not one bit. We enjoyed ourselves. I think that's one piece of advice that I would give with backwoods travel on a longer trip take time to take breaks to find a place to sit and chat to laugh and to break up the hard work that backwoods travel requires it helps make the day enjoyable and these are the moments that you remember Anything that looks like a trail up there? Oh, 
after struggling to find where the trail was due to blowdowns, the trail turns out to be pretty nice. Not bad at all. There it is, we found the end. Oh dear. <laughs> Not a lot of water, but we'll figure it out. So today's progress so far, uh, not bad, but considering how far we need to go, um, we gotta step it up. We've been taking our time. We've enjoyed ourselves. We've explored, stopped on the beach for coffee. And those are the things that make memories and we'll keep doing that. But we'll also uh, push to make time sometimes too. And we really wanna meet our goal today. It means a lot, so. Here it goes. After tackling the rock-choked streams, sometimes portaging was a welcome change. But it was definitely on the portages when you noticed that it was time to stop and eat. When you started tripping over your own feet and your tummy started to growl and your legs felt like jello, that's when you knew it was definitely lunchtime. <laughs>
Moosehide Lake, we were both pretty quiet when we got to this point because we knew what was to come was going to be tough. A tough portage over three kilometers. Okay. This portage was not only long, it was tough to follow in some places. And it's a miracle that we made it to the lake for sunset and we made it to Kofan Cabin at dark. Somebody was watching out for us because it was tough. <laughs> 